Okay, let's do this again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody from YouTube. I do know that we have a problem with the stream on Facebook, but I believe that we can always rebroadcast for you later. But if you're struggling on any of the channels, please kindly jump over to the side. And I see everybody is already up and going. And you have been typing on the screen, breaking mind limitations. Hallelujah. We are breaking mind limitations this morning. Father, we thank you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Father, this morning as we approach the throne of grace today, we approach you as little children ready to receive all the good gifts and the benefits that you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And we are ready, oh God, to break the strongholds of the mind. Every stronghold of the mind shall be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Every stronghold of the mind shall be broken this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are ready. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 18, 2, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I will take refuge. He is my shield and the power that saves me. He is my stronghold. Hallelujah. So this morning, Father God, we come ready to take refuge in you. We take, come to you, O oh God. We recognize you as our shield, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, you have made an invitation to all of us that if we love you with all our heart and we love you with all our soul and we love you with all our mind, O oh God, that we are going to be protected, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. We know that there are ongoing battles, O oh God, and as we approach the close of the year, O oh God, we understand the importance of breaking every mind stronghold, every stronghold of the mind that would not have us think and see the way you think about us, oh God. So this morning, oh God, we wake up this morning together in fellowship with other believers, oh God to renew our mind yet one more time and to verbalize the truth about who you are, oh God. We are here to say the truth about who you are. We are here to renew our minds yet one more time. Hallelujah. We are here, oh God, to reactivate the promises that you have given to us, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, as we continue to pray this morning, we decree and we declare that you are exalted, oh God. You are exalted above all. You are the ruler of all things you are exalted great is your power oh god majestic is your power oh god you exist before all things and you will con continue to exist before all things and lord we are ending this year with you oh god you existed at the beginning you are the alpha and you are the omega in jesus mighty name thank you all powerful god welcome all powerful god you are the all-knowing God and you are the all-superior God, superior to every human being that is on this planet earth, oh God. And here, Lord, we are here this morning. Yet one more time, we say, give, give us just that one word, oh God, that one word that we still need for today, that one word that we still need for tomorrow, oh God. And God, we declare and we decree that you are greater than any principality that is out there. You are greater than any principality. You are greater than any spiritual wickedness that is out there that might want to hinder us in getting to the end of the year. God, you are greater than any satanic opposition that we may have been facing, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, you are greater than every stronghold of the enemy that has been trying to pull us down, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we decree and we declare that your spirit of victory is living inside of us and will continue to live inside of us. Your spirit of victory, oh God, will continue to live in us, oh God. Father, as we continue to be citizens in your kingdom, oh God, we declare that we are free. We are breaking from every limitation of the mind. Every mental limitation has to loose us and let us go this morning. Why does it have to loose us? It is because... We are citizens in your kingdom, citizens that are fully functional. We have access to God this morning, PBP. You have undeniable access to God. You can approach your God with boldness in Jesus' mighty name. You can approach God knowing that he, he's, he loves you unconditionally. Hallelujah. You can approach your God knowing that you are his creation and you belong to him and he's responsible for you. You can approach God with the boldness knowing that you are, uh, he's your refuge and he is your strength. In him you have refuge and in him you have strength. 
and in him he's always present in times of trouble hallelujah always present ready to help you you can approach god this morning that knowing that he's on every side of you he will never leave you never will he forsake you on any side that he is your source and he is your portion now and forevermore in jesus mighty name And Lord, we come to you and we say, how great is your grace, O God? How rich is your grace towards us, O God? How great is your kindness towards us, O God, that I've gathered here this morning, O God? So Lord, we just want to say we acknowledge you this morning. We acknowledge you, O God. And we acknowledge that, Lord, in any mental battle that we may have, that we have to know and we know undoubtedly, O God, that we will win. You did not create us to be bound. You did not create us to be crippled by fear. You did not create create us to be lonely. You did not create us for rejection. You did not create us for unforgiveness, oh God. So somebody is being loose from the mental limitations of unforgiveness. Any limitation created by rejection by other people or rejection of themselves, oh God. And Lord, you are freeing us from limitations created by us for not forgiving ourselves as well. We are being, we, we are being freed from, from the limitations of lust, oh God. We are being freed from the limitations of bitterness, oh God, this morning. Somebody is being freed from the, from the limitations that are created by anxiety, oh God. Somebody is breaking loose from the limitations of depression. Somebody is breaking loose from doubting themselves. Or doubting whether or not the effort that they've put on a particular project is going to pay pay forth or uh, or come forth. Or whether they're going to break forth in whatever assignment that they were busy with, oh God. Somebody is going to break loose this morning from the prison and the limitation of low self-esteem, low self-confidence, not knowing whether or not they are good enough. My God, somebody is going to live here this morning after this broadcast knowing that they are good enough. My father, as we continue to pray, we thank you, Lord, that by breaking these limitations of the mind, oh God, somebody is breaking free from guilt. Somebody is breaking free from insecurity. Father, somebody is going to break free from addictions, oh God, this morning. And as I continue to pray and as I speak, oh God, and I call out all these issues and all these limitations, oh God, I decree that somebody is breaking free from suicidal thoughts that have been plaguing them the whole week, oh God. Father, I speak a freedom and a release from the limitations of thoughts of anger. A marriage is being set free from the, from the limitations and, 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 and mindsets and thoughts that have been plaguing them, oh God, wanting them to separate, oh God. And Lord, that, that you will renew not only their mindset, but you will renew even their vows in their hearts, oh God, to remember that it is God that put them together. Father, I pray for that person that needs to break free in their mind from self-defeating thoughts, self-limiting thoughts, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for, for, for releasing that person from judgmental thoughts. In Jesus' mighty name. Child of God, it is the desire of God that you live in freedom. It is God's desire that you live in freedom from anything from the world that may seek to hold you back, anything that may seek to hold you down. So this morning as we begin to pray, we are praying and we're saying, God, teach us to control our thoughts. Teach me to control my thoughts. It will become more evident as I go on, as I trek and I go go into the scriptures, you understand the importance of us pausing and just dealing with the issues of the mind. We are at at that trajectory point where people normally talk about resolutions, but there's no resolution that's going to work until we sort out the issue of the mind. Because until we remove the limitations, we cannot even hear God. We cannot even see beyond. We cannot even create those faith mental pictures. So Father, we are asking, oh God, we are praying, Lord, teach us to control our thoughts. Teach us to conquer our thoughts. And to bring them to the submission of Jesus Christ. As we aim to please God. As we aim to activate our faith in God. Teach us, O God. 
to bring our thoughts into captivity, into total submission of Jesus. Teach us to replace every unhealthy thought with your word, O God. Let every word, every thought that goes through our mind, O God, let it be replaced by thoughts of good, thoughts of positiveness, thoughts of, of truth, O God, the truth that is in your word. Help us to take on the mind of Christ, O God. Help us to focus our minds on things that are beneficial, O God. Help us to focus our mind, to focus our mind on things that are holy, the things that are pure, things that are true, according to your written word, O God. Help us to fixate our mindsets on that. Lord, we are here this morning gathered to fellowship and in agreement together, knowing that we are not fighting against human beings, but we are fighting against rulers of darkness in high places. So, Lord, we ask you that you gird us up with strength, O oh God, for the battle that we are about to face, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Help us, O oh God, gird us about, O oh God, with your strength so that we can reject every temptation, O oh God. Every temptation, we can reject the thoughts that contradict the truth of your word, O oh God. The truth of who you are, the truth of who I am in you, O oh God. Help me to reject those thoughts that tell me that I'm less than enough for you. Help me to reject the thoughts that, that make me believe that I have not done enough. I have done enough. Somebody declare in the comment section and say, I'm enough. I am enough in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we are gathered as warriors, as intercessors, as those who are even passing by, my God. Let them stop, oh God, right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I speak, oh God, even to those ones who are seeing us for the first time, oh God, that you help them to be strong, oh God. Their strength can only be established in the mightiness of your power, O oh God. Therefore, as protocol breaking prayer platform, O oh God, we are asking, O oh God, that you help us to be strong in your might, O oh God. We are not leaning on our own strength, but we lean on the strength of God. We lean on the strength of your understanding. There are things we don't understand, my Father, but we know that if we lean in your, on your understanding, all things are ordered by your God. Lord, we know that we can't break free by our own strength, by our own might. So teach us to put on your armor, oh God. We can't do it with our own formulas. And that is why, oh God, we ask you, teach us to put on your armor of war so that we can make a stand, oh God. Teach us so that we can make a stand and be equipped with the breastplate of righteousness, oh God. Help us put on the armor, oh God, and help us to put on the belt of truth. Help us to put on the shield of faith, O oh God, to wear the helmet of deliverance, O oh God, to wear the sword of your word, O oh God. As we continue, O oh God, to live and walk in union with your son, Jesus Christ, O oh God, we submit to your power, my father. We clothe ourselves with your whole armor. So, uh, Father, we are asking this morning that you turn over every rubble, everything, just turn it upside, upside down, oh God. Every wall that the enemy has put up, any wall that the enemy has put up in our mindset and fortified in our mindset, let it break down, oh God. Break every limitation, oh God, in Jesus' name. Let every limitation be broken in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Father, we come in the name and authority that you have given us in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to demolish every high thing that is exalting itself. We ask you to demolish every stronghold, oh God. Father, I ask you this morning, I stand in the gap and I stand as the head in this house, oh God. And I ask you to demolish every Goliath. I ask you, Lord, to demolish every mind oppressing spirit that is trying to seek us, uh, uh, seek itself, uh, to put itself high above you, oh God. Any, any, any spirit, any monitoring spirit, any evil spirit, any mind oppressing spirit, that is trying to keep us bound, oh God. Demolish it this morning, oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, the walls of Jericho crumbled when praise and worship went up. Father, as we praise you this morning and we worship oh you, you, oh God, the walls of Jericho are coming down. I prophesy, PBP, to everyone under the sound of my voice. TikTok and you on YouTube as well. And everybody will watch the replay. 
As Jericho's walls crumbled, I pray for you that the enemy's plans against your mind will fall. I pray that the enemy's plans against your mind shall be shattered. They shall be shattered by your great strength in Jesus' mighty name. Let the enemy's plans be shattered in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you will break every unhealthy cycle that we have put ourselves in. Any unhealthy cycle that our lives, our minds find ourselves in. My God, we are crying out this morning the same way that David, King David cried out to you, Lord. And said, you are a shield around me. Father, we are here. We are asking for the same shield. You are our shield. You are our glory. You are the one who is the lifter of our head. Lift our head on high in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for healing that heart condition. Adonai, we call on you. We pray that you give us strength to stand. Somebody open up your mouth and say, Lord, give me strength to stand. Give me the courage to fight one more time. Give me the perseverance to win this battle, my God. Father, I pray for the peace which surpasses all understanding to guard our minds in Christ Jesus. Let the peace that surpasses all understanding, everybody who is listening to the sound of my voice, everybody who is seeing me right now, may you be consumed by the peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray for you, PBP, and everybody under the sound of my voice, that you will stand on the promises of the word of God. And the Bible says that blessed are those who hope in you, O God. And those who trust in you will never be put to shame. Father, I decree and I declare that none of us shall ever be put to shame in Jesus' mighty name. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, the invisible God, the only God, be all honor, glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. Father, you said in the gospel of Mark, we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul and mind and all our truth and everything and our minds. Child of God, you are to love the Lord your God with your mind as well. That means you are to harbor thoughts that are good. You are to love God. We are to love God with all the thoughts that we go through, that we think about and understanding and with all our strength. That is the instruction. So Father, we are here to rededicate and declare one more time that we love the Lord our God with all our mind. In the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11, the Bible says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory. It is the majesty of God. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and on the earth, yours is the dominion. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted and you have exalted yourself, O God, as head above over all. And God, take no other position except the position of your headship. You are exalted above all. Thank you, Jesus. He himself existed before all things, says the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. He says, it is he's before all things and in him all things hold together. In him all things hold together. Father, my life can only be held together only with you. You are the controlling, you, you are the controlling force. You are the cohesive force. You are the glue. You are the super glue that controls the whole universe. Who am I, oh God? If my life feels like it's not coming together, it can only be held together by you. And Lord, I'm here. I'm saying here it is. Hold it together. Do what you need to do. Are we tracking together, saints? Psalmist says, great is your majestic and mighty Lord, and abundant strength, O oh God. Your understanding is inexhaustible. Your understanding is infinite. Your understanding is boundless. No bounds, no limitations. For I know the Lord is great, and the Lord is above all gods. Oh, so that I may know that thing which is immeasurable, that unlimited thing, that surpassing greatness of, 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 of the power of God, of those who believe in you. Father, 
I need a life without limitation. I need my mind to be without limitations. Break all limitations. According to the workings of God, according to the workings of your mighty strength, O oh God, according to the workings that you produce, O oh God, According to the same power and the same spirit that you applied when you raised Jesus Christ. Break the limitations in my mind. Some of you dream, but you dream as if you are putting limitations. You are thinking, if I dream this, it might be too big. If I dream this, the issue is a dream is a dream. They didn't ask you to budget in the dream. Sometimes we run too many calculations and say, God, how, when, how, what? No, he did not ask you to run calculations. He asked you to dream. We shall see dreams in the last days. We shall see visions. Dream, child of God. Dream. God bless you, Jess. We are different because our citizenship is not of the earth. We cannot be bound by limitations of earthly creatures. Our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await instructions from heaven. That's what we operate in. We have the boldness and the confident access through faith in him. And that is why we live such an audacious life. We know that his grace is sufficient. We have the courage to freely and openly approach God and ask again this morning and say, Lord, break all limitations from our mindset. Break all limitations from our mindset. Somebody wants to build a house and they are bogged down by where am I going to get the money? Where am I going to get the money? The issue is, do you have, have you visualized your house? That's, let's just start there. Visualize your house. Before we get to the money and the counting. The first thing that comes to your mind that drives you when you want to do something. What is the vision you are seeing? If it is a God vision, if it's a God dream, it has to be big enough to scare you. Yes, it has to be. Because otherwise, what is the point of dreaming of something that you can do by your own strength? The vision comes first. Then the provision comes later. The vision comes first. The provision comes later. Yes, he says you must count the cost before you start. But you, you're, gonna, you're going to execute once the provision has come. So one of the greatest limitations, child of God, is at the top of the mind. One of your first limitations you're going to have to conquer is conquering your mind. The limitations that reside in your mind. The mind plays a very critical role in your life. The, your mind will play a critical role in your destiny fulfillment. Many people today have limitations that are not physical, but limitations that are mental. You must understand that whatever captures your mind has captured your life. Whatever captures your mind has captured your destiny. So if your life is not transformed, it means your mind is not renewed as yet. That means that you have not effectively applied Romans 12. So my mind has to be transformed. Father, I pray for transformation of minds all around this morning. If your life is not trans transformed, it means your, your mind is not yet renewed. That's why it's important that as parents, we don't destroy our children with certain negative words because those negative words take root in our children's mind and our, our children now become limited and say, no, it cannot be done. It's only done by this nation. It's only done by this race. We are the ones that sometimes build up these limitations in our children and we need to repent if we have been tracking in that way. Sometimes it's even teachers and school principals in schools that limit your child's mind because these children, when they grow up, they don't know that they cannot do something. But we infuse these things in their head. So if you are fond of using negative words around your children, stop it from today. And if you hear teachers using negative words around your children, make sure you put a stop to it. Am I communicating? Are we tracking? Let your mouth be filled with blessings for your children. 
And, and I know we've come to the end of the year. Some did not make it through high school maybe, and they have to repeat a grade. Your child may have failed a grade, but they did not, does not mean they are fa failure. Failure of an exam does not mean you are a failure. Are we tracking parents? Talk to me. So let's be careful the words we utter. Right now, some people are running comparison checks and say, why can't you be like the chill child from next door? Why can't you be like so-and-so? Look at the children, they pass. No, be careful of the negative words that you're going to be uttering in your excitement of shouting as a parent. I know I call it excitement, but we need to chop off and, and, and speak words that build. It's still that same child that has to go through that same grade next year. Let's not put limitations on them. A child may fail an exam, but he is not a failure. Make sure you 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 go back to that child. Encourage them again one more time. Tell them you're not a failure. Help them work through the program of next year of what they need to do. So when you have a chance, a chance and a, 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 to reason better, reason better. When you start changing your reasoning capacity, you now start changing your season. You change your reasoning, you change your season. You don't like the season, change your reasoning. When people are hating on you, I'm not saying hate them back. You can just simply avoid their presence. You don't hate them. You know that this person doesn't like you. Stop hanging around them. So that they don't pull you down. You don't want, you don't want, you don't, they are always pulling you down. Avoid their presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody say I'm breaking mind limitations this morning. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 6 says, For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of men. We are not fighting with the same way that men are fighting. So we don't fight back with negative words. We don't fight back with hate. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. They are, they are, they are, they are not carnal. They are not bloody. The weapons of our warfare are divinely orchestrated. They are powerful in that they can destroy. destroy. They are destructive to fortresses. They, they can destroy things that are mentally, those committees that are busy calling themselves and calling meetings in your head. Those things that are, those thoughts that are just swimming around your head as if they got an invitation. You must tell them, you do, I did not invite you. You are not welcome in my mind. But our weapons are such that they, they are such that they destroy sophisticated arguments that exalt themselves and, and, and any proud thing that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. So what are my objectives before we close? That you live here understanding the effect of the limitations of the mind. And I hope that I've drilled it into some extent. When the mind is limited, there are effects that can be damaging and can be permanent. So you need to understand and move yourself from that. And the other objective is for you to understand that the source of limitations of the mind, what are those? What are the sources of those limitations? These, those things that limit you. Where do we get limited from our minds or in our minds? And how do we cure? We need to understand how do we cure the limitations in our mindset? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the top of our mind, at the top of the discussion, that is what is going to determine how you're crossing over into 2024 and how you're going to start. If you can conquer the limitations in your mindset, everything is hunky-dory. Everything is just going to be good for you. You don't even have to write 15,000 resolutions and everything. But you have to plan. You have to have a strategy so that you can be having, being, being able to measure so the mind, your mindset plays a very critical role in your life and in, the, in your destiny. Hallelujah. If you've ever studied psychology, those I think I just did psychology for a year. 
when they teach you, like if you teach a dog to do a particular act and the dog does that particular act, you know, it's very difficult to change that habit and behavior. But let me make this example. For example, if you tie a dog, you know, to a particular uh, place or something or any animal actually, and the, 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 that animal is, is used to the fact that it's not able to move. Even if you remove the chains, after five years, if you've been tied down to one place, the, that, that animal or that dog will not shift because it's used to why? It's used to being limited. That rope that you tie around the leg has transferred to the brain. So the brain thinks I'm still tied up. Even if you have removed it, it was sleeping, you remove the rope, you remove the chain. In the mind, the brain is still, I'm stuck. That's why some people can be in abusive relationships and even the, 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 the abusive partner might die or might leave and the person still thinks, I cannot do certain things because that abuse still sits there and it needs to be rooted out. And this morning we are rooting it out in Jesus' mighty name. We are uprooting it. We are uprooting it in Jesus' mighty name. We're destroying it. It must be totally destroyed. Anything that has so condemned your mind to think that you are in chains and you are never going to be free, be free in Jesus' mighty name. So you understand that you are fighting things that are not, not necessarily physical, but you are mentally limited. Those are the things we are breaking this morning. Mental limitations, mind limitations. So I don't believe that 2023 is complete as yet completely until you deal with the forces that hinder your rising to, to the top until you deal with forces that hinder you and, 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 and that don't want you to reach the top. Hallelujah. Four things I want you to know. Life and destiny are processed out of your heart or mind. Let me say it again. Your life and destiny is processed out of your heart and mind. Why do I say that? Proverbs 4.23 says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow springs of life. Watch over your heart with all diligence. From it flows the springs of life. That means life and destiny literally issue out of the heart. This is what the scripture says. Secondly, the reality of the mind becomes the reality of life. Did we get it? Those who are taking notes. The reality of the mind becomes the reality of the life. So what you're thinking in your mind becomes the reality that you experience. That is why it doesn't matter how much you can say something else different with your mouth. But if your mind is not thinking good thoughts, we're going to see it by your actions. Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you, but it is begrudging the cost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, the captivity of the mind is the captivity of your destiny. If your mind is captive, your destiny will also be held captive. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse five says we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. So Anything that is holding the mind captive is going to hold what? The destiny captive. So the captivity of the mind is the captivity of life and, and, and the captivity of the destiny. So whatever captures your mind captures your destiny. Let's make sure. Oh, Jesus. Let me not answer. Strongholds of the mind become the strongholds of life and become the strongholds of destiny. Whatever holds your mind strong has your destiny held strong. Lastly, like life is upgraded when the mind is renovated. Just wrote that statement for you. Maybe you can write it. It can resonate with you. Your life is upgraded when the mind is renovated. That is why 
Some people's lives don't change because their minds are not being renovated. Your mind needs renovation. You keep on thinking things that are horrible. You keep on thinking yourself as inadequate. You keep on thinking of yourself as needy and and also th- your mind is not you renovate your mind and start thinking about the way God thinks about you. Even your prayer requests, even your prayer life changes. Present your bodies dedicate your bodies dedicate your whole self as holy well pleasing before god this is the rational thing that you could do for yourself that you present yourself and by the renewing of your mind by the renewing of your mind your mind needs to be renewed stop thinking yourself as a victim stop having this sense of entitlement that people are supposed to do things for you focus on godly things focus on godly values focus on things that are above that you may prove what is the true perfect will of God. So the renewal of the mind is the transformation of your life begins the transition of of you of your life being transformed. And if your life is being transformed surely then it it reflects that your mind is equally being renewed. So there are many examples in scripture that shows you how people's mindsets were renewed and all that. The children of Israel for example in the in the book of Numbers chapter 13 verse 33 when they were set, they 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 the there were spies that were sent out to spy out the land. And the Bible says in Numbers 13 verse 33 there there we saw the sons of Anak and um the sons of Nephilim and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight. So this is how the children of Israel saw themselves. They saw themselves as insignificant. So if you keep on thinking yourself small, if you keep on thinking that I'm a nobody, that's exactly how you're going to enter 2024. Nothing is going to change no matter how many prayers we can pray. Your mind needs to be changed. How do you see yourself? Many can pray for you, many can tell you that this is what but what do you believe? Hope we're tracking. What do you believe? Hallelujah. That limitation. That limitation. Many start well, but they don't end well. Many start well, they give up because of delay. When things delay, when they're being processed, if you remember the parable of the 10 virgins and the other five virgins whose oil ran out, why did the oil run out? There was a delay of the bridegroom arrival. And through delay, they were impacted negatively. PBP, I prophesy to you this morning that you will enter your destiny. I prophesy to you that you will enter your destiny and all limitations in your mind will be broken in Jesus mighty name. You will enter your destiny in Jesus mighty name. Your mind shall change in the right direction so that your life can change in the right direction. Don't ever consult your situation to determine your situation. You must decide first what is your destination, then rearrange your situation. Oh, I said something there. Do not consult your current situation to determine what is your destination, but decide what is your destination, and once you have decided your destination, rearrange your current situation so that you can now begin to order your step and strategize moving forward. That is what I meant by you do the vision first, you see the dream first, you see the house first. Not where is the money so that I can start dreaming. That that is just in rever- reverse. The vision came first, provision came later. Those that are struggling with provision first before thinking of the vision, well there you have it. It's a limitation of the mind. Hallelujah. Look at the man at the pool of Bethesda who instead of 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 now saying you know what this is the time at the stirring of the water I'm going to jump in and I'm going to get my miracle I'm going to get my healing he's saying there's nobody around to help me sweetie 
This is 2024. Coming in. A friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine yesterday, I sent her a picture of uh, one of my pictures for my vision board. And she said, Walala wasala. You snooze, you lose. That's what it means in Zulu. You snooze, you lose. You must be very clear what you are doing in 2024. We are finishing. We finished drawing the pictures now. We are going. We are getting like this. Walala wasala. You snooze, you lose. The Bible says in John 5, there was a man, a certain man. It didn't even give him a name. Had been ill for 38 years. 38 years, same problem. 38 years. And when Jesus noticed him lying there, helpless, knowing that he had been in that condition for 38 years, for a long time, do you want to get well? And the guy answers, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. The question was, do you want to get well? It's not who is around to help you. Sometimes we must, ask just simple wisdom, common sense. Do you want to get well? No, not is there somebody around to help you. Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. That guy is just lucky that Jesus was around and he was a nice guy that day. Every time I want to step into the pool, somebody steps in and, 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 and goes ahead of me. Yes, of course, everybody wants to go ahead of you. Everybody wants to be number one. Move on, jump in. Everybody's gunning for it. So what's going to set you apart? What's going to set you apart? What's going to set you apart? Understand that the pity party issues don't work anymore. This is not victim mentality does not work. It can only work up until a particular point. Even in families, people get tired that every time, oh God, help me, Jesus. Oh, Father, I repent. I repent in advance, but let me teach this. Maybe this will help somebody. Even the ones that are called your loved ones, Anytime you always say, hey, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? Oh, my back. Oh, my head. Oh, this part. Oh, the, the, yeah, yeah. You are draining people's energy. I'm not saying don't say when you're in pain. All I'm saying is that there a, comes a point where you need to also generate your own vuma inside I hope if I'm offending you, just type there, Pastor, you're offending me. It's okay. You'll be strong. But just tell me. You need to generate your own thing, man. That tells you, guys, there's only so much. People can feel sorry for you and say, hey, sh I'm so, you know, ah, don't worry, you know. God will answer. God will answer. Listen, as soon as they just go around the corner, those people have forgotten about you. Can I help you? You, with confidence, you go around requesting prayers. You think those people remember your prayer requests. Sincerely, be honest with yourself. You think they're just sitting around and saying, Ooh, Takazan is my prayer request for the whole month. They also have their own endeavors and their own agendas. So sometimes... Tuturu by yourself. Just shake yourself and shake yourself and, and let's get going, guys. Let's get going. This is life. These are lemons. We're making lemonade. It's not ginger beer. We are making lemonade. Okay, cool. Sharp. Your family, yes, they love you. They understand. Yes, you are in pain at that point. But at some point, you need to get one-on-one -on -one with God. God, you know what? This is... Okay, God, since, you, since I'm waiting for this part to heal, while I'm sitting down here, what can I do? Oh... Ossian. shake yourself you can't sit for 38 years they de determine what is it that you do when you are sitting down gay. determine what you're doing people will only help to the extent that they can my darlings they help to even parents get get flustered get get drained and uh, th that parents with special needs and I'm, I'm 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 really praying for you for the strength and i know there are some parents even here on this broadcast that have got special needs children and it's only the grace of god that puts you together my darlings and may the lord give you strength because you guys are just amazing 
So now I'm not talking about children who have or, or who are born like that. I'm just talking about yes, life dealt you lemons. Yes, things didn't go down well. But does it mean you have to make your family suffer throughout? Let me talk to those. Yes, you lost your job. Yes, you were retrenched. Oh my God, I, I didn't want I wanted to be a nice person until the end of the year. But you're not going to put your, your grandparents through suffering. We've got such entitlement in some of these teenagers lately. You think, so, so what you finished my trick? So what you didn't get a job? So does it mean that you must make your parents as if they are, you are holding them hostage? They have to support you. Why can't you just get up and do something with your hands? Why do you think you're such a bag of special cookies that you cannot go and put your hands to work and do something and generate income? Nobody can tell me they cannot generate income. Nowhere, nowhere in this world, in this world, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in America, the fact that somebody left Kenya and came to South Africa and still made it in this country. The fact that somebody leaves South Africa and goes to America, that means there is ways to generate income everywhere. God is able to bless the works of our hands one way or the other. One way or the other. In whatever country, you can move here and go to Zimbabwe and still. If you don't like me, tell me, Pastor Fortune, you are too hard. Sense of entitlement. Let me talk to South Africans. Sense of entitlement. I don't know. Maybe what in other countries. Uh, let me just talk to my people. Somebody is able to generate a, 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 and start a business from washing people's blankets. And no, when you are too good, your hands don't do that. You don't want to do domestic work. Sweetie, there are domestic workers that have built beautiful massive houses while you are still dilly darling and wondering whether you will own one bedroom house it's a mindset limitation it's beautiful you got a degree you got everything yes everywhere they're crying about governments not giving jobs it's everywhere and if you don't like this one this government you can always change go and apply immigrate somewhere else do I face the same challenges? Yes, I have faced them. But I'm saying, Walala Wasala, 2024, shake yourself loose. You are not going to be like the men at the pool of Bethesda. No limitations of mindset. Maybe, maybe if I provoke you like this, you will think outside of the box and say, what can I do? What can I do with these hands? Surely you don't know how to bake only on Christmas. You can sell us cookies throughout the year. You can do something. Let me get out. Prophetess, I, I, it's every, everywhere. 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 That child that is sitting behind the till at checkers, at pick and pay, at woolies, that's got a become degree. Do you not think that they're also feeling pain? But you know what? They said, you know what? Instead of sitting... So what am I, I'm daring you, I'm saying, there's a pill. If you don't have medical aid, you cannot afford depression medication. Sweetie, you can afford Bible medication. If you don't have a Bible, drop me an email, I will send you a Bible. Unless I cannot afford the courier charges if it's outside of South Africa, but I will send you a free Bible, trust me. And in that Bible, there are tablets that deal with the mental limitations. I need you to break free of those mental limitations. If you can sit on this TikTok and dance the whole day and night and be laughing, sweetie, you can sit there. I, I will send you links to websites that will help you to do free courses. We're going to make and do this thing. No more limitations, physical or otherwise. I'm telling you, it starts in the mindset. Can you see the question? Can you see the answer? Do you want to be made whole? Not is there somebody. What are you waiting? Somebody. Where does the somebody enter? The question was, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Not is there a person around? Do you want to be made whole? Yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to propose marriage. What? You are saying that a man is your ticket. You are, you are a man or a, you are waiting for your ticket. So you've got a, a financial insurance policy that has to pay out by you being married by somebody else that's when life starts 
Don't mock my God like that, guys. Awa. If that is your motive, yeah, was it yesterday I was talking, Prophetess De Dear Davis, about you, what is your motive? Sometimes these delay delay answers that God does is because they're saying your motive is not right. You can't. You can't just want to make another child's uh, 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 another child who belongs to another parent. They must be your check, your check out of your issues. You are budgeting through other people. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. One plus one is one, not half and half. Cannot be. What is the question? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? Good evening, Christina. What was the man's answer? I have no man. I have no man. Hey, guys, this thing is not in a man. Others don't have, others have men. They are in marriage and they wish they did not have those men. Oh, Cindy, God bless you. Some are praying for marital settlement. Some of them are saying, unsettle me. You don't know. I thought I wanted a man, but I didn't know. I wanted a man. I got a boy. Ah, may those who have an ear hear. Honestly, I'm just telling you the truth of this thing. We will help you. We will pray you into, you want to get married. Yes, we will pray you into that mode. Yes, awesome. But once you're in there, you must understand. We're going to pray that you stay there. <laughs> because some, you may go in and you may want out. So be careful what you're praying for. You may force this thing. Into, I want a man, I want a man. And you end up getting a boy. And you end up getting a project. As my, one of uh, <laughs> my church members says, you, I'm not Bob the Builder, Pastor. I'm tired of being Bob the Builder. I'm the one just building, building. And this, this is powerful. I have to share this with you. And this I heard from a male pastor preaching this. He says, a woman is meant to complain because a woman, he needs, she needs somebody to look up to. Anytime a woman looks up to a man and does not get the answer, once a woman, a woman is very resourceful. She will look for answers. And once she doesn't have the answer she wants, this one is not me. This one, but it was a powerful lesson. And he said, once a woman goes to another, to the husband and asks for an answer and he does, she doesn't get it. And every time she goes back to the husband and she doesn't get the answer, meaning you are not leading as the husband anymore. There are no answers you are giving. There's nothing to look up to. And then you start complaining and saying, my wife is looking down on me. Why? Because you're not developing yourself. You are not upgrading yourself so that I can look up to you and have answers from you. I need to look up to somebody who is having direction, who is leading this family. If you keep on not leading the family and you are on snooze mode, that is the challenge. That is the problem. It's not me. I heard it as well. And I wrote notes. I said, mm, that is true. So upgrade yourself. You see your wife upgrading, upgrade. You might not upgrade by having degrees or something like that, but upgrade even mentally. Have a solution to drive and to, to build your family, to navigate your family to the next des destination. Oh, Lala. Many people today waiting, waiting, waiting. Your miracle is not waiting for you. Your miracle is not waiting for you. It's moving. Let it be said without the guilt of an overstatement that the real situation of everyone lies with their decision. It is the decision. Will you be made whole? That was the decision breaker. That was the deal breaker. The answer was supposed to be, yes, sir, I'm ready. Yes, sir, I'm ready. Not I have no men. There's no vision. There's no vision in that answer. You see, I don't have a connection like you. 
You see, I don't have connections in government. That's why I'm not making it. You see, I don't know anyone in that company. That's why I'm not making. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Sweetheart, I'm telling you, even if there is one thing I can tell you, that supervisor, that manager cannot dispute good work. They can try and put their family members, but they cannot fight with results. There comes a point in your life that God will lift you up and elevate you. In the midst of those gangsters that are trying to make as if they might trying to put your light under a bushel, they're trying to dim your light. Uche sukona, lift up. Jesus will lift you up and show you off. No more. I stopped school when my father died. I stopped school. My, my uncle said, no, 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 no. There are people that were stopped from going to school by their uncles, by their whatever, but they broke free. At some point you break free. Run. 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 Somewhere there's a door that will open. There's a gate. Mary almost committed the same abomination. You shall bring forth a child. She said, I don't know a man. You see, wrong answer. Mary, the mother of Jesus. The angel says, you will bring forth a child. Mary says, I've never been with a man. That was not the question. The question, that, that it was a statement to tell you, you are going to give birth to a son. Not, have you been with a man? We are not talking about a man here. You need to understand that there are times when God wants to break through in your life. God wants to bypass a man. God wants to bypass systems. God wants to break protocols for you. God wants to bypass certain processes to give you a solution that you cannot imagine. God bypass, break protocols for me. Break protocols, whether or not consummation has happened or not, Jesus still came out. Jesus still was born without sexual intimacy. Jesus was born. Is there anybody here today that God will bypass something to give you a solution? If you are here, say, I'm here. Let me see that I'm talking to people who are present. If you are ready that you want God to bypass systems for you, say, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. If you are one, if you are the one, shout the loudest and say, I'm here. Bypass processes for me. Father, we declare we are changing our mind today. We cannot wait on men. We cannot waste our lives. Somebody open up your mouth and tell God and tell the, everyone who will hear, I cannot wait for a man. I will not waste my life. Under God, I am taking my destiny in my hands. Under God, I must become what God wants me to become. Under God, I will become what I believe. Shout the loudest amen that you have ever shouted on this, on this platform. What are you willing to do for yourself? What are you willing to do for yourself is far more important than what any man can do for you. What are you willing to do for yourself? Because trust me, whatever anybody says they will do for you, they don't have the energy. They don't have the same zeal. They can never have the same passion like you would. That You do not want the limitation like the man at the pool. No, 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 no. I will not be limited by a pool. I won't be limited by anyone who's... You, they, those people are writing an essay. They're going to take too long. When are they getting to the conclusion? I need to move. The prodigal son had to break free and say, no, 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 no more. I, I'm, I'm stuck in this thing. I left my father's house who has, was wealthy. I was too fast. I took things and, and now I'm stuck in this situation. Look at the mess that I'm in. Oh, Jesus. For, for, <coughs> If it is a liar, you will not take my voice. <coughs> For as long as a man doesn't come to his senses, he will not come to a change. Father, help me come to my senses so that my change can come. Father, help me to come to my sense so that my change can come. There is a connection between your senses and your change. So, Father, if my sense is not sensing, how can my change change? I need my change, so my sense must sense. My sense, must, my faith must sense. My sense, my sense. 
God, work on my mind this morning so that my change can come. A change of reasoning will bring a change of season in my life. Father, I receive a change of season in my life. For as long as Kanama Shokodiaba, for as long as you think that your life is over because Akodiaba Hashonda, then your life is over. If the guy, the prodigal son guy, had thought that his life was over and his inheritance was over, he was not going to think and, and go back to his father. Oh, he wouldn't have gone anywhere. But oh my God, I'm coming back. It's all about you, Jesus. For as long as the prodigal son thought that everything was, was over with his life and was over with his father, then it was over. It ain't over. Somebody shout and take your neighbor and say, it ain't over yet. It's ain't, it ain't over. I'm coming to my senses. How can strangers be benefiting more from my father's inheritance than me? I'm coming to my senses. Whatever the sources of limitations are in my mind, Father God, I pray them away this morning. I pray, oh God, that, that, that there will be a will in me. There will be a will of, on everybody that is listening to the sound of my voice, my God. Work on my will to bring therapy to myself. Work on my will my, to bring healing to myself and healing to the people around me, oh God. Oh, come to your senses. The things that limit you. Oh, I'm past my time, guys. Yo, I didn't even realize. You see this talking. Negative words and treatment from your childhood. Pray them out now. Father, we uproot every single negative word, every treatment that is ill from our childhood, everything that has been holding us back, those things that are negative, negative words that were spoken over our life, we pray them out this morning in Jesus' mighty name. We uproot them, O oh God. We destroy them, O oh God. We scatter them away from us. Let them be far from us in Jesus' mighty name. Those who are told that you are nothing good, your parents never found anything good to say, they kept on speaking negative words to you, saying you cannot do well, you cannot do, you cannot amount to anything. Those words that grew up with you, those words that grew up with you, that you never experienced the love of a father, you never experienced the love of a mother, you never found any positive affirmations from your mother, from your teachers. All you heard was condemnation and it built up this mental limitation inside of you. Father, that which seeked to destroy our mindset, that was negative. We uprooted in Jesus' mighty name. Parents, beware of the kind of schools that you send your children to. Yes, teachers must be strict, but they shouldn't be allowed to say anything. Anybody you meet even in the street, don't allow anybody to say anything negative about your child. Why? Why must they limit? I am so sensitive. Do you see how big I am? If you say anything negative, my child is just as big. If you say my child is fat, I will, I will, I will deal with you in English. I don't, I won't curse, but I will deal. I will put, nobody must be allowed to. Why would you do some, say something like that? Why should people have so much to say about people? That, is it bothering you? Whether that child has got a big nose, whether that child has got a big, big ears or whatever. Wh why did they feel the necessity? Can you know, let me leave that like that. I want to close and pray. <laughs> they may have failed the exam, but they are not failures. Don't allow people to say negative things about your children. Don't allow it. Deal with it very fast. Don't allow them to hang around such people. Father, today I speak by the authority of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree that every negative word is cleansed from our lives in Jesus' mighty name. By the word of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, O oh God, that our mouth shall be filled with blessings. We will bless our children. Our children will do well and they will succeed. And they will even be better than us in Jesus' mighty name. Our children will go where we have not gone before. And Father, our mouth shall be full of positive pronouncements going forward in Jesus' name. Father, we pray against recurrent negative patterns and cycles in our lives in Jesus' name. 
whatever the pattern of God, whatever the negative patterns of God, where we were supposed to receive favor and it was our turn, oh God, and we missed it, oh God. We speak to an end to that. We speak an end to, to the negative cycles when whenever we are to be favored, that it, whenever it is our turn, that somebody seems to overtake us. This time, oh God, nobody shall overtake us. We are taking charge. It is our time and it is our turn. Somebody say it in the comment section. Help me echo it. It's my time. It's my turn. It's my time. It's my turn to be favored. Father, we pray. I speak to past failures. I speak to past mistakes. I speak to past errors, oh God. Whatever blunders or errors have been committed in the past that the devil has made us feel like failures, oh God. Whether it was through education, graduations, whatever it is, oh God. Whatever it is, oh God. Even in marriages, oh God. Those that are feeling like they have failed in marriage, oh God. Father, let them know by the time this broadcast closes that they did not fail. They are not failures. The marriage might not have worked out, but you did not fail. You are not a failure. You are not going to believe what the devil wants you to believe in Jesus' mighty name. You are good. Don't let anybody tell you you are not good at that. I announce to you today that failure is not you in the name of Jesus Christ. The road just bend so that you can regroup and move forward in Jesus mighty name. You are cleaned, you are detached from that failure. Whatever the devil tried to attach to you, you are cleansed from it. Father, I pray against wrong company and wrong association that may hinder us and want to limit our mindsets in Jesus' mighty name. Father, separate us from people that will not value our potential, that don't want us to see our potential. Those that don't celebrate our potential. Those that don't celebrate us, oh God. Those that keep pointing us out, pointing out things that we cannot do, oh God, separate those people from me, oh God. Divorce me from the wrong associations. Divorce me those who are not excited about the projects that I embark on. Divorce me from people who are, are not excited about my potential and the possibilities in my life, oh God. Take away those people that call themselves my so-called friends, oh God. But whoever, they talk negatively behind your back, Lord. Separate me from those people in Jesus' mighty name. Separate me from those people that slander, oh God. Talk down at you. Talk down about me. Father, let me break free from societal conditions and societal expectations, oh God. That's your prayer right now. Father, I'm breaking free from every societal condition and societal expectation. What the society has placed as a bar for me, what society has placed as a bar for my family, and saying you will only reach this far and not this far. The devil is a liar. I'm coming out from that condition. I'm coming out from the condition of the impossible and I'm coming into the condition of the possible in Jesus' mighty name. I'm stepping into the condition of the, that which is achievable in Jesus' mighty name. I'm breaking out of what is the established norm in society. I'm breaking out and I'm breaking forth. I'm breaking the mental limitations in Jesus' mighty name. God, you are Jehovah and you are setting the standard for me in Jesus' mighty name. I live by the standard of God and not by any standard in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody open up your mouth and thank the Lord for the teaching this morning and the prayers. Father, we thank you. We reject every negative picture given by the enemy. We reject it. Keep us in good company. Keep us in positive company. Thank you, Jesus. We are high flyers. We are high thinking people. We are high flyers and we are high thinking people, oh God. Holy Spirit, uncover possibilities for our destiny in Jesus' mighty name. No longer shall we communicate with the wrong people in Jesus' mighty name. Finally, oh God. 
May we always see ourselves in the place where you have positioned us to be. May you never forget, PBP, that you are royalty. You are a king and you are a queen in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I am royalty. I am royalty. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for everybody that's tuned in. I see that I've ex exceeded time. It is well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just see who's here. YouTube, God bless you, my darlings. Thank you so much. Selena, good to see you. Short and spicy. You ran away from TikTok. I see you on this side. Malisa, God bless you. God bless everybody on this other side of the woods. Let me check on okay, Facebook. I couldn't connect that other channel, so I can't see the comments there. God bless you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to click subscribe on the button there. And you click the like button after you have watched. God bless you. Thank you so much, darlings. See you tomorrow at 5 a.m.